Yu-Gi-Oh! is a trading card game that now rivals Magic the Gathering in sheer card variety, creating a daunting wall of complexity for outsiders. But the advent of new ways to purchase singles has helped to lower that wall. The question left is, can a new player enter the ring using nothing but the sealed product that smart people warn us foolish noobs against? Hello and welcome, I am Shimmy and the Simeon, trying to cash in on the sealed only Yu-Gi-Oh! craze with my off-brand videos. We will be building a Yu-Gi-Oh! deck using nothing but sealed products and a budget of 60 Oz each week. No singles allowed. Unlike other sealed only challenges, we will be allowing training for cards because if we are going for that authentic old school feel, training is fundamental. Training will have a stipulation to otherwise keep in the spirit of sealed only. We can only trade for a card if we have done our best effort to obtain it by a sealed product. This means that a card obtainable will soon say, Ancient Guardians can only be traded for if the set goes out of print and we are unable to find any remaining sealed product. Our budget will be boosted by winning games, while losing games will decrease at our budget. Our goal is to get to 120 dollars budget, and we fail if we ever manage to get down to 30 dollars budget, because let it be real, at that point there is no recovery. First two weeks matches are not counted because success was never an option. So let's dive in. Here are our, our initial sealed product, our Egyptian god decks, Obelisk the Tormentor. Now, as you can see, I already got one open, but for the sake of having at least one unpacking on this first video, let's ho go ahead and open up this box. So, get our fancy playmat, which, as you can see, we don't need. And try to get our deck out. There we go. So, obelisk on the front. Open it up. So, first card on top, Obelisk the Tormentor. Probably going to be our boss monster for quite a while until we can get something better. Soul Crossing. I don't know, I don't like this card. It feels like a, a worse Monarch st Stormforth. But we'll see. Fist of Fate. Only useful if we have Obelisk out, otherwise it's useless, so, I don't know, we'll see. Divine Evolution, I can, I don't know about this card. Once again, we only have Obelisk as the target, so that kind of feels like it doesn't, won't work for us. Level Resist Wall, which is a bit of a weird card, it turns cards that you, that to, of yours that are destroyed by battle or card effect into a few weaker monsters can help in certain situations. Angel 01, which is special summon fodder. Um, only requires a level 7 or higher monster from your hand. Mare Mare, who on their own can actually bring out Obelisk. But we're not going to usually normal summon this. But there is a card in this uh, structure deck that allows us to special summon this from the deck. Harpy's Feather Duster, we all know what that does. Nimble Momonga, classic defensive card. Bazoo, can be buffed, but can buff our creatures and helps enable another creature in this deck. Cyber Dragon gives us a, a easy way to get a beater on board. Yep, our other two Nimble Momongas. Hardened Armed Dragon, which I'm not, I'm not sure about playing this one. Um, you have to discard a level 8 or higher monster, which feels a bit iffy, and its tribute effect doesn't feel worth it for Obelisk. Super Nimble Mega Hamster, special summons a monster from my deck as a flip effect, and it has 1800 defense, might be usable. Evil Swarm Mandragora. Another way for us to fill up our board after a, a um, turn of opponents swarming. Photon Saber Tiger searches itself and is a 2000 beater for level 3, but otherwise will only be 1200. Bit risky, second one underneath it. Um, Evil Swarm Salamandra, another banisher. Ra's Disciple, which is a card which I'm not sure about playing. It, the issue is that it blocks out our special summons, so that means that we kind of get locked out of our plays, and it can only be tribute summoned for Obelisk in this deck, so yeah, not great. 
Unmasked Dragon. Um, yeah, when it's destroyed by battle, special summon a weird monster with 1500 or less defense, which can be itself, or Mare Mare, because Mare Mare is a weird monster. Um, of course, the disadvantage is it has to be destroyed by battle, but eh, we might be able to make that work. Nimble Beaver. Special summons a Nimble Monga from the deck. That's all we really can use it for at the moment. I guess you can special summon a Nimble Beaver, but why would you? Condemned Witch, a way to just tutor up any of the forbidden spells as you need it. And you can use it to special summon a level 4 um, Fairy Monster from your deck, except for itself. I don't think there's actually any targets, other targets for its effect, so I think that part of the ability is irrelevant. So, yeah. Gizmek Uka, which I think is going to be one of our major cards, at least initially. Like, special summons, as long as a monster is special summoned from the main deck, doesn't matter whose main deck. I know that the first time I played this card, I made that mistake. And uh, if it's normal or special summoned, target a face-up face monster your opponent controls, and you can special summon another monster whose attack equals their defense with the same attribute. No, it doesn't seem machine. The early Gizmat cards did not care if they were machines or not. And this is going to be relevant for the rest of our sealed journey. Gizmat Mikami. If we have six cards banished, we can normal summon this without attributing. Otherwise, most of the time we'll be normal summoning it. To, sorry. As is. With tribute. And you can use it to then tutor up a uh, another creature with... It. Attack equaling defense, which could be Obelisk, could be um, Gizmek Uka. Uh, can't search itself, though. But, once again, as Uka, this is going to be one of our major cards initially. Brain Control, which allows us to steal a card. So long as it can be normal summoned or set, so nothing from the extra deck, obviously. Monster Reborn. Of course, we're going to play this. It special summons a monster. And can even end the end the game if we special summon Obelisk from the graveyard at the right time. Your classic tutor card, uh, different dimension capsule, banish a card face down, and after two turns you get it. Of course, it's too risky to actually play in modern formats. Pot of Avarice, target five monsters in your graveyard, shuffle all five into the deck, and then draw two cards. Look, it's a pot. We need it. Double summon. We get two summons, might to en enable us to actually get to our big beaters out as we need it. The three Forbiddens, these are good. Look, it's forbidden. <laughs> Not forbidden as in the ban list, of course, but these cards are probably going to be worth having at least in our side deck. Supply Squad, once per turn, if your monster you control is destroyed by battle, or card effect, draw a card. Might help us. Monarch Storm Forth. This is the better Souls Crossing, in my opinion. Granted, Souls Crossing can be used on your opponent's turn, but... I don't know. The Souls Crossing feels too risky. And too limited, actually, as well. Hall of the Haunted. Classic card. Cloning. Well, problem here is that it only triggers on normal or flip summoned monsters that have levels. So it doesn't work on XEs, does not work on pretty much anything that comes from the extra deck, actually. So, I don't trust this card to work out for us. Drowning Mirror Force, classic Mirror Force card. Uh, this one only works on direct attacks, though, so we'll see. Might be a sideboard. And then our free token, three token cards. So, I'll cut here and come back when we've got our deck. Here is the deck that I've come up with. We have no extra deck because Obelisk structure decks don't come with any extra deck monsters. So, first of all, we're going to run two Obelisk the Tormentors. I think three is asking a bit too much. So, two is what I'm going with. We then run... Three Gizmek Ukas. Its effect is fairly useful and it can special summon itself. Uh, one Mare Mare as a easy way to play our 
Obelisk, Gizme Kamikami, searches up Obelisk and Uka, so we've got our full playset. Full playset of Cyber Dragon and Mandragora as our special summon creatures. Three Bazoos as creatures that can both set up for Mikami and banish and become powerful enough to beat over some things. Three Unmasked Dragons to summon out our Mare Mare. Three Nimble Bomongos as defense. Three Nimble Beavers as something to tutor up Nimble Momonga and to trigger Uka. Three Pot of Avarice because we need the card draw. A Monster Reborn. Three Monarchs Storm Forth as both removal and also an another way to get more tribute summons. Harpy's Feather Duster for removal. Fist of Fate because. If we do manage to get to a obelisk out, this is both removal and also a second um, and third Harpy's Feather Duster. Two double summon, because it will just help us get our summons out. Three brain control. I'm still not convinced that to, this will work out for us, but at the same time, the these will help us drop our monsters. And then three Drowning Mirror Force. Look, we're if an opponent destroys our board, we we need something to help us out. For our side deck, because I've somehow managed to wrangle one together. Three Sil Evil Swarm Salamandra as a in case we need more monsters. Three Forbidden Dress. Three Forbidden Chalice and three Forbidden Lance for their ability to both protect and destroy opponent's monsters. Three Call of the Haunted as additional monster reborns in case we need it, but I don't think we need them in the main deck. So this is what I've put together, and we'll go to games and see how this goes. Before we get to the games, this is the special section of the episode. The part where I try to differentiate myself from the deluge of fantastic Yu-Gi-Tubers with some lessons from card games. If you're not interested in the lesson, then skip to the time shown. This week we'll be keeping it simple and talk about the top three reasons you will likely fail at tournaments, at least initially. These reasons all have obvious mitigations and are largely game and format independent. The first reason you will likely fail at tournaments, at least initially, is that you don't know the game very well. I take this statement further than the obvious base rule knowledge though. It means knowing about certain rules interactions and what happens in specific scenarios. This is most common to new players in a game, though it does affect veteran players as well, particularly in the opening weeks of a new release of cards. I think Yu-Gi-Oh shows this best with the concept of missing timing, a situation where an effect does not go off due to a new item being added to the chain that overrides the last event. In our case, there is a low likelihood of this being a problem, but it will come up eventually and there are many other rules interactions that are critical and without preparation, you can be blindsided. The easiest way to resolve this problem is to just play more games and ask these rules questions, especially to veteran players and judges as the only way to know the game better is to, well, learn it. The second reason you will likely fail at tournaments is that you don't know your own deck. This doesn't simply mean knowing what cards are in your deck, that obviously helps, but it means knowing how your cards interact with each other and knowing your game plan. Are you trying to drop your boss monster? When will you do it? And how will you do it? Even veteran players have this problem when playing a new deck. In our case, our primary plan, plan is to either set up for Gizmak drops or to set up to drop Obelisk. There are already flaws in our plan. We have no real option for protecting any of our big boys except for the forbidden quick play spells and attempting to recur Obelisk just leads to sad times. The only way to know your deck is to play out test hands and generally play your deck. The third reason you will likely fail at tournaments is you don't know the meta. No, I'm not talking about what Reddit calls the meta, though knowing some of that stuff will help. I mean knowing who you are likely to play against. Is your meta playing tier 1 decks like Zodiac Eldritch or playing Fire Fist Funsies? If you see Dragoon, how will you deal with him? Can you deal with him? Is your meta all top tier players? 
or people looking for casual games and bringing their fun decks. This reason is usually the number one reason why people will fail at tournaments. After the other two, as the matter generally doesn't even matter if you don't to, um, have the ability to deal with the first two reasons. The only way to know the meta is to play games against people in your meta, which is why I expect a full blowout against us. I have no idea what my local meta is and can only hope that this tin scrap that I built to will be good enough to handle what is there. Won't be. Now that I'm done giving my excuses for this week's poor performance, let's get into the games. First up, we have O2 against Plunder Patrol. Where we were drowned in the briny depths of the field, Bazoo was our only interaction, and even he was sunk under the waves when attempting to step over the notorious Blackbeard. Second game was against Crusadia Dragonling. Shout out to Revs. Game one, we managed to resolve Uko against her opponent, who survived through seven summons before finally being popped. Game two was less interesting. The lack of interaction in our deck really hurt us here. O2 continues to be the result. Third game was against a scrap access code talker deck, which we almost secured a game against due to the player's poor draws. But then they drew Fossil Dig and OTK Dust. Similar event game two for another O2. Finally, the fourth game was against Rose Dragon Link, which was also O2, but we managed to surprise our opponent by dropping Obelisk himself, who survived one turn before my opponent realized that summoning Black Rose Dragon could remove Obelisk. He does not have the destruction prevention. Why Konami? Why does he not have destruction prevention? We did learn that Black Guardian does not activate in the face of Obelisk though, so that was interesting. So week one was all losses. This wasn't too much of a surprise. We really missed having any sort of interaction and no, Uka doesn't count. We did get an OTS pack containing Cosmic Flare, Power Filter, and Drytron Zeta which raises a question about how we should move forward. And we got this snazzy promo card box. So it's not a total loss for this week, kind of. For next week, we will be starting the expansion of our deck, as well as starting to replace the weaker parts of the Obelisk deck, moving into a plan that will be more consistent and give us a much needed boost in power to start playing properly. Until next week,